You know, after a year and a half of canvas engraving, stainless steel burns, tumblers, plywood, MDF, stone, hardwood, honestly, just about everything you can throw at the X2 S1, my machine was begging for a deep clean. Don't get me wrong, I regularly clean the machine, but today we're going deep, deep into the dark places. Now, I know cleaning isn't the most glamorous part of laser work, and this probably isn't the kind of video that goes viral, but this is one of those things that keeps your laser running smooth, safe, and producing great results. And if you're like me, you probably put it off a little too long. But here's the deal. If you don't take care of your laser, it will not take care of you. So today I'm walking you through my full maintenance process. This is specific to the X2 S1, but even if you're using a different machine, I think a lot of these tips will still apply, or at least will get you thinking about your own maintenance schedule. And trust me, once you see what I pulled out of this machine, you'll probably want to give yours a good once over too. I'll admit, I was a little hesitant to show how gross things had gotten inside this machine. It is on camera a lot, and part of me thought, man, people are going to judge me for this mess 100%. But then I remember, it is a tool, a very well used one, and if it looks a little beat up, that just means it's working very hard, just like we are. So why even bother with all this? Well, first, performance. A dirty machine just doesn't engrave the same. You start to see reduced details, uneven burns, or even skipped lines. Second, smell. Yeah, you know the one, the mix of burnt wood, acrylic, and mystery gun built up all over the place. And then there is safety. Grease plus dust plus heat, that's a fire hazard waiting to happen. No thanks. X-Tool actually recommends a regular maintenance schedule, but like most people, I've skipped a few. They got a lot of good videos and documentation on, on their website, so I will leave a link down in the description for you guys to check it out. It helped me out a lot. This is my only machine, and it's hard to pause production sometimes, but taking one hour or two to get it back in top shape is always worth it. Before we jump in, let's talk about tools. I like to line up everything ahead of time keeps the process smooth and saves strips back and forth. I use gloves because isopropyl alcohol isn't great for your skin. According to many sources, extended contact can dry out your hands or cause irritation. So gloves on. You'll also want some paper towels, Q-tips, a soft brush, maybe even a mini wire brush for tougher spots. I'll also use compressed air or air in an air compressor if you got one. And then there is your basic warm water and mild soap. It works wonders. Now, if you're like me and lost those tiny screwdrivers, even for a little bit, those that came with the S1 kit, don't panic. Most of the screws use a 2.0 or 2.5 millimeter hex. You can grab those at any hardware store. Or go the upgrade route with something like the Bosch electronic screwdriver that I've been showing off. Love the stuff. I will link all that in the description if you want to check them out, of course. First thing, power off the laser and unplug it completely, including that security USB. Luckily, my setup is on a bench with wheels, so getting behind the machine is, is pretty easy. If you haven't done that yet, I highly recommend it. Makes cleaning so much less frustrating. While we're back here, let's just tackle that exhaust fan first. In my case, it's hooked up to an inline extractor mounted on the wall. That thing pulls a lot of air and collects a lot of gunk. I unscrew the fan housing, just four screws, not big deal, and carefully pull it out. If it is a little stubborn, it's probably caked with some dust. I'll wipe the blades with a paper towel and some alcohol, and I will leave it unplugged while it airs out. You don't want lingering fumes near electronics, and we'll be moving things around during the cleanup anyway. Now, let's remove the laser module now. If you're not familiar with all the parts, here's a quick breakdown. You got the distance sensor, the magnets that hold it in place, the air hose, of course, and those uh, data cables. I leave the honeycomb in place when I remove it, just in case I drop it. I've done that before, and I can tell you that I like the honeycomb being there so it can catch it. Take your time here, gently unplug the air hose and the cables. I, I know a lot of people have a hard time pulling it out. Just take your time. You don't want to force anything. This is the most expensive part of the machine, so handle it like it's the crown jewel of your shop. 
All righty. Now that the module's out, let's talk about the base. First, I pull the honeycomb out and immediately start soaking it with the greaser in my old bathroom shower. It's already stained from paint and laser grease, so no big loss. It will sit there for about an hour or so, so we're going back to the base. I had cleaned this base just about a week or so ago, but even then, there was still burned in gunk. Soap and water cleaned it pretty quickly, though. I use a vacuum to suck up any debris. Actually, you should probably be doing that very often. You know, every so many jobs, just get under there and, and, and check out what you got there. Then I use a microfiber towel with warm, soapy water. And listen, don't stretch about the scratches on the base plate. Between the RA2 work that I've been doing, you know, doing tumblers and just the day-to-day -day use, dropping tools, whatever it is that you're doing there, you know, you're going to get a few dings. They are just battle scars the way I see it, right? Part of the journey. This scratched up lid, well, sadly, that's totally normal. And you kind of have to come to expect it will get like that eventually. Here's how I keep it clean without damaging it more. Now, let's look at the acrylic lid. Some folks never remove the plastic film, like my dad in his old car, you know. Others freak out about every single scratch. Me, I say, use it, enjoy it, and keep it clean. I've tried window cleaner before, and yep, it worked okay, but over time, I noticed it was hazing the acrylic a little bit. It turns out some window cleaners can actually damage acrylic, so now I stick to just warm water and dish soap. That's it. And whatever you use, make sure it is dry before closing it. Water and electronics aren't exactly the best friends. Now, this one is pretty easy to miss, but super important, the rails. These are the metal bars that your laser module glides along. If they're sticky or dirty, your accuracy completely suffers. Wipe all three sides with a paper towel just to start it off. If there's buildup, I'll use a little alcohol just to cut through it. Then I reapply a little bit of that grease. Just a dab. If you notice, when it came from factory, you had some little bumps in there. You know, you had some excess grease. That's kind of what you're shooting for. Not a crazy amount, but you know that you can see that you put something in there. Don't be shy. I usually do this work with gloves anyway, so I just use that and rub it by hand. It doesn't need to be perfect, just enough to get things sliding smoothly again. By now, the honeycomb has soaked uh, long enough, I think, so I hit it with the handheld shower head first. I might take it outside and use the hose, depending on the weather, of course. You could even use the power washer, but go easy. I like using the power washer, but it can get a little scary there, so... Just be careful. I prefer it. I really like using it. It's a lot of fun. But be mindful that these things can bend if you get too aggressive. The goal is to get all that grime out of the cells. And yeah, it's never going to look brand new again, but it doesn't have to. Just make sure it's clean enough so that it's not transferring soot or residue onto your projects. I use these little brushes to get inside the cells. I give it to you, it takes a long time, so it is up to you how much time you want to spend there anyway. Now, I let it dry completely before I put it back in the machine and that metal enclosure, you know. Just make sure it's dry so you don't make things worse for yourself down the road. Now, let's go back to the laser module. I use fresh Q-tips and alcohol to clean the lens and the glass on the front. Clean the lens cap too and check for any scratches or cracks. X-Tool includes some spares in the original box, and if you have misplaced them, they are easy to order. I'll, I'll drop the link below for those. I also blow air through the internal fans to just clear things out. I take the grill off here, just remove those screws there, and get in those plates again, just being very careful. Some people just do it, you know, on the surface. I tend to just pull it out and clean it. It's a lot easier to clean that way. Some people don't like pulling that fan out. I tend to do it because it's easier for me, but it's up to you. Now for the fun part, we'll put it all back together. I reinstall the honeycomb, I reconnect the laser module, plug in all the cables, and double check the screws around the base. It's kind of satisfying, right? 
everything just looks ready again. I make sure my exhaust fan is clean and dry, plug the hose back in, and I make sure everything is working properly with my inline dust extractor too. All right, friends, that's the process, nothing fancy. It's just about taking the time to give your machine the care it deserves. That's it. If you found this helpful or if you have your own cleaning tips, drop a comment below. I love hearing how other makers handle their maintenance schedule. Or come join me on Facebook. I share behind the scenes updates there all the time. And if you want to support the channel, I have linked all the tools and cleaners I use in the description. Most of those are affiliate links, so it helps me out a bit if you click through. Also, a big shout out to everyone supporting me on Patreon and through YouTube memberships. You are the real MVPs. Thank you very much. All right, until next time, keep making, stay safe, and take care of your tools. They will take care of you. So long.